Hey, my name is Milan, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can connect the RabbitMQ message broker with the Wolverine messaging library and use the two together inside of a .NET application to build some messaging functionality. I'll start by walking you through my baseline Wolverine setup. I have the Wolverine messaging library installed. The specific library is called Wolverine FX, and I have the latest version installed at the time of recording this video. Now, to set up Wolverine, you call builder host use Wolverine, and this enables it to work using a local queue, which is useful if you want to implement some messaging functionality on a single server, but when you want to go distributed with something like RabbitMQ, then you'll need some additional functionality, but more on that in a moment. Secondly, we have an endpoint here where we can register a user, and we're using this iMessage bus abstraction to send a register user message. I'm calling it a command because that's what it is. And this is handled by the register user handler. And what Wolverine does is it gives you a convention to connect your message with the respective handler if you name the handler the name of the message and just append handler. And you also have a handle method inside that takes in the message as the argument. Now, additionally, I'm also publishing an event after registering the user and I have a respective handler for the event as well. So now I want to see how I can move this flow from using a local queue into using RabbitMQ and start building out some distributed messaging functionality. Well, the first thing I'll need, obviously, is to somehow run RabbitMQ. And I'm going to do this with .NET Aspire by installing an Aspire hosting package for RabbitMQ. So let me go ahead and add the latest version. And what I really like about Aspire, this is a bit of a digression, is you get this really nice readme whenever you install a specific package that shows you a very simple sample of what you need to do to integrate the set integration with Aspire. So in order to add RabbitMQ, all I would need to do is say builder add RabbitMQ, give a name to my component, and now I can reference it from my application. So I'll say with reference, and then let's specify the rabbit in queue. And I'm also going to instruct it to wait for the queue to start before running my .NET project. Now I'm going to also add a container lifetime, and I'm going to say persistent. And I want to run this with the management plugin enabled so that we can see what Wolverine is going to create inside of RabbitMQ. Now, when I start my .NET application with the RabbitMQ integration, you will see our RabbitMQ resource is going to start up. And I just want to quickly highlight that you should see a connection string here called connection strings rmq which is short for rabbitmq and this contains the connection string value that's going to allow us to connect to the rabbitmq instance so now that we have our message broker let's see how we can connect it with wolverine i'm going to browse for an additional Wolverine library. And you can see it comes with a lot of additional integrations, for example, Postgres, which you can use for Saga persistence, and even for Outbox storage. You can also use Azure Service Bus, SQS, and Kafka for your message brokers, but we are interested in RabbitMQ. So let me go ahead and install this library. And once this is ready, we can start integrating RabbitMQ into our Wolverine setup. So I'm going to pass in a delegate to the use Wolverine method. And here I have some additional options now that allow me to configure my connection with RabbitMQ. The two options I would recommend is either calling the use RabbitMQ using named connection. And you can see in the docs, it even says that this is recommended when you're using Aspire, or you can call use RabbitMQ. And here you can pass in your own connection string or even a URI that's going to connect to RabbitMQ. So let's go with the recommended Aspire route. And this should be sufficient to let Wolverine know how to connect with RabbitMQ. Now, additionally, we have to see what happens with the exchanges and queues on RabbitMQ. Wolverine offers an option to auto-provision all the required infrastructure on the broker, which is what I'm going to do here. And since a lot of people are going to be comparing this to mass transit, you're going to find that the experience is very similar. Even the naming conventions between them are quite similar. Now you do have an option to also declare your own exchanges and queues and configure the bindings between them. But this is first of all complicated if you don't know what you're doing. And secondly, it's a bit out of scope of what I want to show you in this video. So I'm going to stick with auto provision. Now, another thing I want to use is conventional routing, which is going to route my messages 
based on the message types. If you're used to this functionality with mass transit, you're going to find this very similar. And of course, you have the option to configure how the convention is applied. For example, I can decide how the exchange name is created for a given type. You can pass in a delegate here to customize that. You can also customize the queue name for the listener with the same idea here. You get the message type as the argument and you're supposed to construct how the queue name is going to be created. Now with this in place, I'm going to start my application and I just want to test out that Wolverine is able to connect to RabbitMQ and that we also get the queues and exchanges provisioned inside of RabbitMQ. So Aspire is up and running. I'll go ahead and open up the console logs and then let's scope it to my user management API. And if you scroll down the logs, you should be able to see some logs from Wolverine letting you know that it's connecting to RabbitMQ, which you can see here. And then it's going to go ahead and declare the exchanges and queues that it discovers based on the defined messages and their respective handlers inside of my application. Now, if I go back to the resources and then I click on the RabbitMQ resource here, I should be greeted with the RabbitMQ management UI. And if I want to grab the password for this, I can go look at my RabbitMQ resource and then there should be this RabbitMQ default password. So I'll go ahead and show the value because it's only temporary and I'm going to use it to authenticate with my RabbitMQ management instance. Now, if you go ahead and look at the exchanges that we have defined here, I'm going to highlight a couple of them. First, you can see we have two exchanges named after our messages in the application register user and user registered, which is our event. Then we also have a dead letter queue. This is configured by Wolverine and any messages that fail to be processed by our application are going to be dead lettered. Now, also, if we take a look at the queues that we have defined, there's a respective queue for the registered user message, the user registered queue, a queue for the dead letter messages. And since I'm pretty new to Aspire, I honestly have no idea what this queue does called Wolverine response. I'm going to do some more research on this and add that as some extra context under this video. But hopefully someone that's more knowledgeable with Wolverine is going to leave a comment letting me know what this does. But the essence here is we have our exchanges and queues configured. If I go into the queue, you can see we have the respective binding from the exchange to the queue using a routing key. And this is how our messaging is going to work. Now, if I go back to my application, I want to make a couple of changes to how I'm working with Wolverine. And the first one is I'm going to define a body here inside of my endpoint. And we're still going to call invoke casing, but I want it to return a user ID. So let's store that in a variable. I'm going to call invoke casing, expecting a GUID to be returned. And I'm going to just say return results and let's say OK and I'll pass in an anonymous object with a user ID property. Now, in order for this to work, the registered user handler needs to return this value from the handle method. So I can no longer return an event and instead I'm just going to return the user ID directly and I still want to publish my message. So I'm going to inject an iMessage bus here to be able to do this and I'll say bus and let's say publish async. We're going to publish the same event, which is user register. So let's test out our current flow with creating a user by calling invoke async in the endpoint where we should get back a user ID that we can return as the result. And we should also be publishing this user registered event. So let's add a breakpoint here, a breakpoint in the event handler, and a breakpoint right here where I'm supposed to return the user ID. I'll jump into the scalar UI to test out my endpoint. And let's add some arguments here. Let's say test at test.com and just test for the first and last name. And if I hit send, you can see we hit the breakpoint in the register user handler. So let's go ahead and persist this in the database. This succeeds. Now we're going to publish the user registered event. And you can see that this is actually going to be invoked and handled before I'm able to return the result from my endpoint. Now, this is still happening behind the scenes, but you can see they're running concurrently. And I'm going to hit continue here. So everything seems to be still working. Now, what I want to do is take a look at the distributed trace. And what's also important here is that we include Wolverine as a source for our distributed tracing setup. The simplest way you can do this is by saying builder services add open telemetry. And here I can chain a call to with tracing. And for tracing, I can now call add source and I'll specify Wolverine as the source. So now when I start my application, this will be an additional source for my distributed tracing telemetry. 
And after I complete an API request, like we just did, we should see a proper distributed trace. So if I go into my distributed traces, this is the trace for the API request that we just sent to create a new user. And what you might notice here, or actually what you might not notice, is the use of RabbitMQ. So our messages are still handled locally even though we configured our RabbitMQ connection. Now, if you're like me and you're still learning about Wolverine, you might find your head scratching why this is the case. The best I can figure out is that Wolverine is going to default to the local transport mechanism whenever you are running in a single process. So even though it knows you are connecting to RabbitMQ, it's going to default to the local transport because everything runs in a single process. It's going to be faster than messaging with RabbitMQ. Now, of course, we can disable this, and you do that inside of the call to use Wolverine. And what you need to say is options, policies, disable conventional local routing. So with this line of code in place, I'm going to execute the same request again. I'll just update my email here so that I don't get a duplicate. And we'll hit the same breakpoints as before. Just notice that this time, we hit the return of a result before we landed in the user registered handler. I'm going to omit the breakpoints and press continue here. And let's send another request so that this executes without the breakpoints and we get a result back. And now let's observe the distributed trace. Let's take a look at this one, which is the faster of the two. And what you're going to notice here is we are now working with RabbitMQ. So here's our message that we are publishing to RabbitMQ. This is actually the user registered event and then we have a receive call to the respective handler. You can see user registered handler here, which is Wolverine consuming the event from RabbitMQ and then invoking our respective handler. So now this is actually happening out of process. And you can also see this in the distributed trace because the API request represented by this post users here completes here. And the message processing happens in the background and it takes one second because of that delay we added in the handler. Also, if I take a look at the user registered queue inside of the RabbitMQ UI, you can see that we have a spike here for that one message that was published by our application and then subsequently consumed inside of our event handler. So you can see it's relatively straightforward to connect Wolverine with RabbitMQ and the process is pretty similar between other message transports. They have some really good abstractions in place. The local queuing taking precedence over RabbitMQ was a bit confusing for me, but I managed to figure it out. I'm not sure if this was present anywhere in the documentation. It probably was. I just somehow missed it. But nonetheless, I'm glad I managed to get this working. Also, just to give you a heads up at what I'm looking at next is how to add support for sagas and also the durable outbox and inbox patterns. Let me know in the comments what you think about Wolverine so far and the RabbitMQ integration, which finally allows us to do distributed messaging. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash that like button so this gets recommended to more .NET developers. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, stay awesome.